name is Jules and this is my podcast all about basically knitting and sewing with some other bits thrown in for good measure. I'm coming to you from um, West Sussex in England, in the south of England and today is Thursday the 16th of November and I believe this is podcast number 36. Hopefully I've got that right. Um, Okay, the weather. Have to have a bit of weather chat. Today is grey and damp. I don't mind one bit. Um, it has been lovely. We've also had a lot of rain, which is also lovely. I just like this time of year. I like the weather. I know lots of people don't, but I really do. I am actually already have that feeling of um, kind of like hibernation, but healing myself. Like, I can't explain it, but you know that time of year when you want to just cosy down and really nourish yourself and have some peace and some quiet and some tranquility. And um, I remember feeling like this actually when I'd had a really bad bout of depression and anxiety about three years ago now. And I remember the spring coming on and I went for a walk And I'd spent all winter really struggling very badly. And um, when I went for a walk in the spring, it just felt like I'd hibernated. And I was like a bear coming out of hibernation and kind of sniffing the air and feeling the sun on my skin again. And I feel a bit like that now. I feel, although I'm not struggling with my depression at the moment, thank goodness, I feel like I'm going into sort of cosy hibernation and I just love that feeling. It's so nice. Anyway, (laughs) that was a ramble, wasn't it? Yes. Okay, let's crack on. So I'm just going to pour myself some tea before I get going. I've been, um, I'll talk a bit more about this later, but I've been working with a naturopath for the last few weeks. I think seven, seven weeks actually. And um, she's been helping me with my health and she's got me into um, blending my own teas with um, proper organic herbs. And in the beginning, mm, I wasn't really sure to be fair. I knew they were going to be good for me, but I didn't really like the taste because I was used to sweeter, um, more artificial teas, I guess, but they taste so nice. So now this is um, a blend I'm having at the moment, which is Sense of Calm. Yeah, so this is what I'm drinking at the moment. And I got the recipe, excuse me, from this really lovely book, which was also suggested to me. And in this tea, I have passion flower, dried lemon balm, skull cap leaf and dried rose petals. It looks so pretty, doesn't it? And this book is really amazing. And in the back is a glossary of all the different herbs and how they can help you. Um, And there's lots of, lots and lots of recipes for like boosting your memory and um, aiding your sleep. And things like that. So if you are into herbs and mixing your own teas or would like to be, I really highly recommend this book and look how pretty it is. It looks so gorgeous, doesn't it? Um, and I just made myself some tea in just this little teapot. It's really quite good actually because it has um, a little filter inside. So that makes it much easier. And apparently it's really good to um, have a lid on your herbs so you don't lose all the essential oils from them. So yes, so I'm drinking my tea. I haven't even got onto knitting yet. I hope you don't mind. And this is my lovely mug, which I got when I was in Ireland. And it's a Nicholas Moss um, mug. It's so pretty, isn't it? So yes. So we should get on with the reason why we're probably all here and that is knitting. So for finished things today, first up, I have quite a few finished things. So first up, 
are my my Jemima socks and this is a pattern from the very lovely and very clever Kay Jones who is half of the Bakery Bears and um, it's from her Beatrix Potter Sock Club. So this is Jemima, she a couple of weeks ago I think now released Peter which looks so adorable with little um, paw prints all over the sock. And so there's one more, so I'm very intrigued to find out what number three is, Kay. <laughs> so I'm going to be making the Peter one soon, but these are Jemima. And they need their moment of glory because they are lovely. So they were cuffed down. I am getting more into cuff down, actually. And with a lovely heel flap and gusset. And I love this detail of the... Um, garter down here I think that's really nice and then the amazing umbrella toe which I always use on all of my cuff down patterns um, and it's actually in this pattern this pattern I actually knit it completely as the pattern set which is quite unusual for me I do end up changing things quite often but these are so perfect um, the yarn I used was, let me think, La Bienne May in Amy's birthday colourway and I got this about a year ago I think and it's been in my stash because I haven't wanted to use it because it's so pretty and the mini, I can't actually tell you where the mini is from and it's just a nice kind of soft pink, um, it was just in my um, basket of beautiful bits so that came into good use. Um, what else to say? I knitted them on 2.25 and they are so squishy. It's such a nice pattern and also if you have trouble um, finding a good fit uh, for your socks these are excellent because they're kind of ribbed if you look at this pattern so they have a lot of give to them which is really good if you struggle or if you're gift knitting because they have a bit more stretch to fit um, different size feet so I don't think I have anything else to say about these but I really really love them and I'll be so happy to wear them now obviously um, knitted socks are in full rotation now because it's chilly. Okay, number two in my finished things. Get ready for this, it's cute. Look at that pom. Is that not the cutest pom you've ever seen in your life? Oh, it is so adorable. Anyway, this is on my co-book hat and I knit this quite a long time ago because I haven't been here for ages, have I? That will come later in the, in the podcast. I'll tell you a bit about what's been going on. But this has been knit for quite a while. And this um, was knit with a strand of DK and a strand of mohair held together, which is really fun. I love doing that. I've done it on something else. Or oh, my May... Um, pullover jumper. I'm so confused what to call them. Pullover jumper. I guess I call them jumper more often than pullover. Never call them sweaters. It's not really a, um, a UK term I think. I don't think. I think it's more of an um, American term. Sweaters. I think I'm going to call them jumpers because that's what I've always called them. We change, don't we? And we start picking up kind of language from other people and other countries and it kind of seeps its way into how we speak or how I speak anyway. So, um, no, I'm going to stick with jumper. It's a very strange word though, isn't it? Jumper. Jumper. Anyway, I'm not even talking about my May, am I? So, oh, fluffy. So, to get back on topic, 
this is what I knit my hat from and isn't that such a pretty colour? Oh my goodness, I love it so, so much. I am so into this peachy colour at the moment. You'll see, it carries on, there's a theme. Oh yeah, look, there is a theme. And so this yarn is Winter Rose colourway by the lovely, lovely Nelly, who is Antonella. Look at her logo. Look, there's a little flying, I think it's a sheep. A little angel sheep. Oh, how cute. A little sheep fairy or a little sheep angel. I love this. And it's got violets. So anyway, um, yes. So I knit the Cobook hat. I had an issue. I think it was row 10. And I just, it just wouldn't work. I don't know if the pattern's wrong or I couldn't read it correctly. I'm not sure but it just wasn't working and I spent ages on row, I think it's row 10. So I went on Ravelry and looked at some project notes and it seems like so many people have had the same issue with that row. And some really lovely people had written it out, how they did it with their instructions. So if you are knitting the Cobook hat and you are having the same problem as me, I think possibly if you follow the chart, you'll be okay. I think it's the written instructions. That's my understanding of it anyway. Um, so yes, so many thanks to all those lovely people who write good notes on their um, project pages because that really helped me out. So do that if you're, you're stuck. But it's lovely, it has lovely, I think these are mountains down the bottom. And these gorgeous little bubbles like big flurry of snow. It's so, it's perfect fit. I knit this exactly to pattern and then I found this gorgeous, gorgeous pom-pom. Let me show you again. And it's so lovely and it's on a pop stud. So it comes off for the washing. Isn't that cool? Okay, and the pom-pom came from Lily Vaughan and I don't think she's on Etsy I think it was her own website oh there we go look I'm gonna stand up see if I can get this in focus she does lots of other things as well but these poms are absolutely gorgeous and um, come in this cute little bag I want to look at that postcard So cute and they come in this little bag which is lovely so that's my co-book hat what's next oh yes I have finished another pair of socks these are not for me actually these are for a very special friend for Christmas and see the color these are um milky chai socks and the pattern is from this very lovely new mummy danny little bobbins have you seen her little boy he is so adorable honestly there are lots of babies around at the moment mm, they're so cute i do love babies so anyway let me show you this pattern isn't that a beautiful design? Now I think this represents the frothy milk on top of Danny's um, milky chai. And these wide rib sections here represent the cinnamon sticks. So did I knit this to I knit this to pattern apart from the toe. So it's two by two rib, the lovely milky chai pattern. Um, I have partridge heel. Um, and I added in Kay Jones' umbrella toe, which you'll find on most of her more recent patterns. I know for sure it's on Drippity Drop and her dandelion pattern, but I love this toe for cuff down. They're so pretty. So as I said, these aren't for me. It's a bit sad, but I know the gorgeous lady they're going to will absolutely love them and cherish them. And these were knit out of, what were they knit out of? 
I haven't got the label, but I remember they are knit out of some more Cozy Posy, which is the same as my co-book cat. Did I say that was knit out of Cozy Posy? Yarn? I think I did. So these were knit out of um, a skein that Antonella gifted me when she first started dyeing. And it's in her strawberry wine colourway, which is so pretty. Oh, I think I have got the label somewhere. Oh, here we go. She may not do this base anymore, but it's um, pure wash, organic sock, 80% merino, 20% nylon. And I think my friend will love these, love the colour. And... I hope she knows I've knitted love in every stitch and I was thinking of her so much when I was making them. So yes, and Danny's pattern is absolutely beautiful. I love that there's something to do down here. So you've just got a little bit of simple rib. So you're not using too much brain power and um, you get all the patterning done first, which is not hard at all. Um, I couldn't memorize it. I couldn't memorise it, but it was not a huge amount of lace and it's so pretty. It's not hard at all, just it wouldn't go in my brain. But we all know my brain is not always functioning on um, all cylinders. <laughs> so yes, my milky chai. Let's have a quick drink. very floral this tea it tastes you can really taste I think I might have put some lavender in there as well you can really taste the roses which I love that's kind of my favorite bit I love floral things mm, nice okay I have one more I have one more finished thing and that is another pair of socks which are not for me these are for Bryony for Christmas. I don't think she watches my podcast because I think she finds it a bit boring, <laughs> which I find hilarious. She might kind of watch the first um, five minutes, but we're past that now, so I think we're safe. Um, these are How I Roll Socks by um, Catherine Bryner who is Orange Knits on Instagram. And yes, so I made these for Briny. I had a lovely, um, see both there. When I went to the Country House Retreat last September, I think it was, or October, September, I think, um, there was like a little maker's market and Tracy was selling her yarn there, Tracy of Nora George. I don't even need, I think Tracy's like Madonna. You don't really need to say her surname. <laughs> So um, anyway, I picked up a lovely skein called Ollivanders and it was a 50 gram skein. So I wasn't quite sure um, what to do with it, but I love this how I roll pattern. And I know briny has been wanting some shorty socks. So this is the yarn. I'm not sure if she still dyes this, but she probably does. And if she doesn't, I think she should because it's so pretty. Isn't that nice? And it's kind of a pale blue base with different shades of blue and some bits of purple and pink and it's so pretty and I found this beautiful odd um violet kind of purpley yarn in my beautiful bits basket so that went perfectly in my mind and I did the toes like that because I thought I was going to run out of yarn where in fact I did not I had quite a lot left so I could have done them all one color but saying that I do love how the toe looks so you know that's that's good really I did do a bit of a boo-boo on these because I didn't knit this little cuff long enough I'm just really hoping they don't wriggle down because I've made I think I have two pairs myself of this pattern and they're really really good and I have it with lots of kind of shorty socks that I've purchased. They just wriggle down into my shoe, which is so annoying. It's one thing. I could literally punch a wall if my sock wrinkles, if my sock wrinkles down in my shoe. It just drives me insane. That's one thing that makes me really, really angry. It's the feeling of having a wrinkled sock in my shoe. 
So I'm really hoping Paul Bryony doesn't have this issue with these. But they're really lovely. I do highly recommend this pattern. Um, so yes, another present. I've been quite good. I've been sharing my mitts and um, I've actually made lots of um, socks this year throughout the year for um, gifts. So quite pleased with myself. I think it's a good way to do it because then you don't have that last like month rush because I always leave it late. So yeah, I'm really pleased with those. Um, don't think there's anything else I need to say about those, apart from of course, the bunnies out. <laughs> so that's everything for finished things. So I guess we should move on to in the making. Okay, what's in the making? Well, the first thing you can see is over there. Oh, maybe I should have said. Actually, before we talk about that, I should tell you what I'm wearing, which is exactly the same as what I was wearing knitwear-wise on my last podcast. This is my fairy lantern cardigan. I'll stand up so you can see it. You've seen it lots of times, I think. It's got lovely, lovely eyelet detailing here. Just a really nice shape. But I had an issue where I put it in the washing machine. I think I washed it on 20, possibly 30 degrees. I think it was 20. And um, it shrank quite a bit. Not, the body doesn't bother me. The length of the body is still quite nice actually but the sleeves shrank a lot and they were kind of here, more like bracelet length, which I didn't like, it was really annoying. So what I did, I Instagrammed about this, so you might have already seen and heard about this, but I cut the rib off because it was quite a tiny little band. I think it must have been only eight rows of rib before, it's quite a small amount. And so I just cut it off and luckily they were top down and I had some of this yarn left thank goodness so I just re-knit the cuff and I'm really pleased I did that because oh, there we go because it just makes it so much more wearable and cozy and I don't get cold wrists so yeah I'll definitely do that again if I need to so it was easy, it was really, really easy, and you can't even tell, I don't think. No, you can't tell at all, can you? So yes, I thought I'd tell you that story of woe, but it did have a happy ending, so that's good. Okay, right, we're on to in the making now, and I'm just gonna get my floozy. So floozy is coming on, Oops, I've got in a tangle here. <laughs> Oops, there we go, <laughs> that's better. So floozy is coming on brilliantly. I have one sleeve and I've started the second sleeve. I really like the colour. I think it's really, really pretty and warm and quite autumn-y too. Um, I am a little worried that I might have made it a bit big. I always tend to do that. Um, I always think I'm bigger than I am. I guess I have some body issues, but um, yeah, but it's made out of John Arban, the same as this cardigan. This is DK and this is their um, four ply. So I do know it shrinks a bit if I need it to, but I'm hoping not. Um, but it's lovely. I'm really, really enjoying it actually. It, the whole thing has been a pleasure. And I just love this detailing here. And oh, let me show you a bit close up. It's a little bit bobbly. Oops, sorry. It is a little bit bobbly. I don't know if you can see. Not bobbly, lumpy. But I think it will, like if you stretch it, I think it looks quite good. I think it will block out okay. 
and so I'm knitting the sleeves on 12 inch circulars. For me, that's the only way to knit sleeves. I can't bear double pins. I don't like um, magic looping them. I don't know why. I mean, I magic loop socks, but something about sleeves, I just don't enjoy magic looping. And 12 inch circulars are perfect. Um, you just go round and round and round, as long as you've marked the beginning of your round, it's so easy. Um, so I got this idea from Amy, who is Amy Florence. You all know Amy from Stranded. So she puts, let me see if I can show you a bit better. She marks all her decreases and every time she decreases she puts a pin, which I did before. So I've used these gold ones. This is how I like to use my um, pins. So the gold ones are when it's decreased every, is it six rounds, I think. And then it changes and decreases every four, possibly. And so I use the white ones for that. So I know when to change when I'm doing this sleeve. So I'm knitting away on this sleeve so when I do a decrease here I go over to this one I take one of the pins off and put it on this sleeve and that way I know when this sleeve is the same length as this sleeve because all the pins will be gone so that was a real revelation when um, Amy spoke about that and I thought that is such a good idea and I really, really like these um, bulb pins. They're so light and easy to use. And also because they're in different colours, it makes it really clear um, visually when you need to change your um, decreasing rate. I do have a few more of these in my shop, but I'm nearly out of them. So if you'd like any of those, I'd um, pop over there if you want to. So yes, I'm really loving it. I feel like I knit mostly jumpers, but my cardigans are my most worn knitwear. This I wear such a lot. I love the colour. I'm really glad I went for yellow as well. So um, next year, I am declaring it the year of cardigans. I love cardigans. I wear cardigans way more than jumpers. So, um, yes, yeah, so next year is going to be my year of cardigans. Next year is going to have some changes happening, actually, and I feel really good about that. So, anyway, that is my floozy, and I really, really love her. She does have a little hole here, but I can deal with that. So, I've just got this sleeve to finish and the button bands, which I have to say I am a little bit nervous about. So I'm going to put Floozy over here. Yeah, I am a bit nervous about the button bands because I think it's one of those things, it's like make or break. If you do it wrong, it can ruin the whole look of the cardigan. So I'm a bit scared. I haven't read the instructions yet, so I hope I hope they're very detailed and um, I hope it looks nice because I love it so much. So, oh, I'm very tangled. Okay, you should see the mess already, honestly. Okay, so my next in the making. Last episode, I'd started doing a little video before each section and I put a lovely title and sprinkly bits and just do a little video inspired by Danny, um, like at the beginning of each section, so finish things in the making. But we're decorating at the moment and my whole house is a little bit in chaos and I'm not liking it at all. So. I couldn't really find a nice place to do it. So, yes, so we're forgetting that today. Um, I really, really need some mittens. Um, Bryony bought me some lovely um, Fair Isle gloves a couple of years ago, but they've worn out and they've got holes in the fingers. I can't really wear them any longer. So I decided to make myself some mittens. Should I put it on rather than 
Oh, look, no, look at this. Oh my goodness, it's a mouse in a polo neck jumper. I mean, that's cute, isn't it? Hey, look, look at my polo neck. I'm so cozy. It looks like the mouse is doing the podcast. <laughs> but they, these are a gift from the lady um, from the knitting shed because I love her bunny blockers so much for socks. And um, she gifted these to me, which is so sweet. But they're so cute because they come with a thumb. So you just pop the thumb in. I tie it on when I'm not using them. This is actually the first time I've used them because I haven't made any mittens. Yes, I have. I have made mittens. Don't know why I haven't used them. Maybe I have used them and just forgotten. That's quite likely. Right, I'm going to take my bunny ring off because it catches otherwise. So, oh my goodness, I'm really blathery today. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> so this is my tinsel mitt. I'm going to stand up. When I do a podcast, it's quite good exercise. <laughs> there we go. Get nice and close. Look at that yarn. Oh my this is the colour of my dreams. Isn't it pretty? So these are the tinsel mitts. Let me find some details for you. Oh yeah. So these are tinsel mitts by Dre Array Knits. And you can do them um, fingerless or with like a detachable hood. That's not the right word, is it? Hood? A hood for your fingers. I don't think that's the right word, but it kind of suits it, doesn't it? But I just went with a plain mitten, just because I think they're just really practical. Um, I love that slip stitch detail down the front and the back. They're just really practical when I take Boo for a walk and I can just pop them on and don't get cold fingers. So I really love these. Pattern's brilliant. Um, I've had no issues at all. I've made the medium adult size. The yarn, oopsie, the yarn is absolutely gorgeous. Excuse my messy skein though. I had some um, caking up issues. As you can see, it was a moment of nightmare. It's such pretty colours. It's kind of coral, a little bit of yellow and pink. And the yarn is, I know it's from Jane at Hedgerow Yarns. Oh, here we go. Jane's label. And the colour is Crocosmia, which is a flower. Weirdly enough, I do not like the flower at all, but the yarn is massively beautiful. I just love it so much. It's so warm and autumny and just juicy and lovely. So I really seem to have a thing what with my floozy, my co-book. Oh my goodness. Not that is what am I doing? Isn't that funny? I think it's kind of the warm feeling that I'm after. It's that autumn coziness and fire. Actually, that does kind of look a bit like crackling fire, doesn't it? But they're really lovely. And I have started my second one, just on the ribbing. So, um, yeah, they are my tinsel mitts. I had a spell actually um, a while back when I was feeling quite unwell and I just didn't want to knit. Um, so it was quite a shock really because normally when I'm feeling like unwell it's the knitting that will um, kind of soothe my soul but I just, I just couldn't face knitting so amazingly how I've got all this done because I well I think really when I felt a bit better I went knitting crazy and I just want to knit everything at the moment okay I have also got you do not want to see the mess I'm in 
Oh, I didn't show you my bag. This is one of my all time favourite bags from my beautiful Amy, who is most definitely my soul sister. And I love her dearly. And I just, this bag, oh my goodness, I just realised another thing. Look at the colours. How weird is that? I always used to be just pink, girl. Now I'm peach and yellow. And the funny thing is, I always say I absolutely detest orange. And I do. You know that pumpkin orange? Actually, I'll show you exactly what orange I do not like. That orange. For me, that is the worst colour in the universe. <laughs> Can't even see. That is a really yucky orange. Why Fiskars chose to use that colour on their scissors, I shall never know. And the colour of the Etsy logo, nasty. So that's the orange I don't like. But add some pink and make it peach. I love it. But it's funny how that orange is so close to the other colours really that I love and I just hate that colour. I think that's why I don't really like Halloween. I just can't bear the Halloween colours. That green, dark purple, black and orange. Not me at all. <laughs> anyway, let's finish with my rant. So also in the making are my Hermione's Everyday Sock. So, socks. Look at that yarn, isn't that so pretty? The yarn is my absolute favourite from one of my absolute favourite dyers and ladies and friends. Um, so the yarn is Sweet Sparrow Yarns in Snowberry. That's by Julie. Excuse my nails, they're not very nice at the moment. <laughs> that's by Julie who is adorable. She has a Sweet Sparrow podcast. And um, what is it? Merino cashmere nylon. And it is so beautiful. She has such a light and beautiful, delicate touch when it comes to her yarn dyeing. And I absolutely love her style. So, so beautiful. And these socks are gorgeous. I think it's the first time I've ever done Hermione's, like properly. I think I might have used the stitch pattern. But I love this heel. It has this lovely um, garter, like Kay's actually. And I have partridge, and this is a garter edge here. And the pattern's just lovely. It's just soothing to do. And I must have followed the pattern exactly and done, what's this called, a rounded toe or a wedge toe? I'm not sure. So that must have been from the pattern, which is amazing for me, isn't it? Um, two by two rib. On the little bunny. It's funny, somebody said to me on Instagram the other day, you're obsessed with rabbits and bunnies. And I never thought about it before, but actually I do have a lot of rabbit things in my home. I have a rabbit ring for starters, I have a couple of rabbit necklaces, I have a new rabbit lamp, I have a rabbit chopping board, rabbit sock blockers, <laughs> I must show you this bag. Look at this, it's a bag with little bunnies on and this was gifted to me from my lovely friend Lacey who is Little Red Cottage and she's making project bags now and selling them in her Etsy shop and it's so beautiful so well made and it has a lovely little pocket in there as well but look at the bunnies so she picked really well for me they're just cute so thank you Lacey I love it she also gave me some other bits including I don't know if I can show you very well including these um stitch markers look little hexagons and a little bee <laughs> so cute Anyway, I'm digressing as usual, aren't I? So, I think I've kind of covered covered these socks. Um, 
they've been on the needles quite a while. They're kind of my out and about um, socks for the hairdressers and things. And the second sock, I'm going down the foot. I did lose my sock mojo a bit actually, but it's come back with a vengeance. I don't think it'll ever go completely. And I have a few spaces in my sock drawers, so they need to be filled. So yeah, I'm loving these. They're really lovely. Okay, last in the making, which is something that's not on my list because I only started it last night. Oops. Um, here is another pair of socks. And I ordered this um, ball, I guess, of yarn. And it's Cascade Heritage Prints. which is really pretty, but I don't know why. It didn't even look like this in the picture, but I imagined it to be a bit more pale, a bit more, have a bit more white in it than it has. And although it's lovely, it's kind of a bit red for me. I'm not generally a red person or an orange person, it seems. <laughs> so I decided to try the Broken Seed Stitch socks. They're really pretty, and who are they by? I don't think it says here, the pattern's by. Okay, you'll have to go on Ravelry if you're interested in this. Actually, I might add it to my project page, and then you'll just be able to link from there. I'll try and remember to do that. So, I had this gorgeous, just bare yarn from um, Amy, Little Taylor S. Amy. And I thought maybe I'd try the broken seed stitch to see if it could like almost pale it down a bit. And this is the effect, which I quite like. I'm not 100% sure yet. I need to do a bit more. There we go. But it's quite pretty. I love the back. I think I like the back more, which is just stripes. So. I don't know. I'm I'm quite tempted to tink back and um, just do it striping because I think it's really nice, but it is quite fussy. And that's just so cute, isn't it? And you can still see the striping, you know, the changing. I think I'm going to do that now. I've seen it on camera. It's kind of made my mind up. I mean, this is a lovely texture. But I think this yarn might look, I might prefer it looking like this. And this toe is my favourite toe, it's my toe from my um, Sweet Bee Socks, which is a Ravelry, my very first Ravelry pattern. And I really love this toe for toe up socks. It's very similar to Kay's Umbrella Toe, but obviously it's for toe up socks, which I do more often. So you can find the pattern. Um, I guess I should put a link to my Ravelry shop. That's quite a novelty to say. Um, yes, I'll put a link down below. Oh, I forgot to say, all the links to where you can find me are down below this video in YouTube. All show notes are on my blog, and um, I put links on my blog as well. So I think that's what I need to say. So yeah, I'll put a link to the sock pattern. Also, it's in, um, let me show you, look closer. Also, this toe is in um, mine and Amy's Soul Sister sock pattern. So it's in both of my patterns in my Ravelry shop, if you like it, and I love it. It's a perfect fitting toe for me. So maybe this is a good point to um, have a little break from jumping up and down <laughs> with my knitting and, um, let you know what's been going on since my last podcast. I don't know how long it's been, maybe, might be two months, maybe not quite two months, but um, I have just not been feeling very well. I think ever since I had my really bad bout of depression and my breakdown, I've just not felt well, even before that actually. I 
don't really like making plans to do anything because I never quite know if I'm going to wake up feeling well and pain free. None of the symptoms are um, massively debilitating, but they have stopped me living my life the way I want to. So I would get lots of headaches. I'm still struggling a bit with headaches. I'd get lots of headaches, back pain, as you know, which is kind of ongoing, but that's I'm getting treatment for that. Um, endless tummy troubles, lots of pain and bloating, um, lethargy, just so, so tired, not having the energy to do. I felt like I had enough energy to get me through to about lunchtime. Then after lunch, I was just spent. I had no energy. Anyway, it was about the time that I was just feeling really cross with my body because I didn't understand what it was trying to tell me. It was trying to tell me something. I couldn't understand it and I was just feeling very frustrated. And I kept thinking to myself, I feel like I should be in the summer of my life but I was feeling more like I was in autumn of my life and um, I need to get some summer in. I don't want to lose the summer altogether. And it was kind of at my low point when um, a lovely lady who I followed on Instagram for ages and her daughter, and that's the lovely Leanne who is Cottage Tales and she's trained as a naturopath. My goodness, this lady is so knowledgeable and she is the most caring gentle person and so we've been working together for seven weeks I think now and um, I have learned so much about my body it's, it's been hard and I'd say the first two weeks the first week was okay the second two weeks was awful and I was just laid on the sofa a lot feeling just exhausted I had mouth ulcers and I was just feeling ghastly, tummy troubles, headaches, blah, 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 blah. And um, I just understand it a lot more now. And she's been so kind and gentle with me and taught me so much. So the first stage of the process was basically to calm my nervous system down because she... Um, seemed to think I was always in fight or flight mode that's right and um, so she wanted to calm my nervous system down before we did anything else and that's when the herbal teas came in and um, diaphragmatic breathing mindful eating um, what else? oh yeah eating lots and lots of greens. I have greens like sprout tops, cabbage, broccoli, um, collard greens, spinach. I have one of those things with every lunch and every dinner and quite a lot of them. I have slow cooked kind of nourishing food, lots of soups and stews and things. So it's lucky it's this time of year. Um, so it's been a massive, massive change. I've literally cut sugar from my diet. Um, I was kind of doing that before and now it's com not completely, it's almost completely out of my diet. And I'm starting to feel so much better. I feel like I have the energy to um, kind of do some work after lunch and... I feel like I have a clearer head and my tummy has never been as flat as it has been and that's because she thinks I have a gluten intolerance and not a dairy intolerance although I am intolerant to fermented foods which is weird because they're high in histamine um, and we also think I have a histamine intolerance so yeah, I've learned an awful, awful lot. And obviously it's all tailored to me. So please don't go ahead and do the things I've been doing because your kind of self-care will be different to mine. So I just want to put that out there. That that's my kind of personal um, program. But I'm really starting to feel the benefit of it. So um, 
yeah, so that's what's been going on. So I felt quite poorly for the first few weeks um, after my last podcast. So that's why it's been a long time. Um, yes, yeah, so I just wanted to, I just wanted to share that with you. And um, I do feel um, that healing yourself naturally is a very, very slow process. But I've kind of had enough with the quick fixes. Um, I just want to understand my body and to fix it from the root and not just mask up the um, symptom. I feel like I've been doing that most of my life and it hasn't worked and it's left me feeling really depleted. So yeah, so this is my new way of life. It's hard work, not so much now, but in the beginning it was. I can remember crying over my um, grocery planning, my meal planning and grocery shopping, thinking, I don't know, I had didn't just didn't have the energy or the brain power to think what I could even cook. And also having to kind of cook for um, Pete and George and um, obviously they like certain things, but it's all falling into place now. And I feel like it's really, really helping me for the first time I feel really positive and um, so yes that's what's been happening with me so I thought I'd just share that with you okay so a little bit of dream knitting now where did I put it hang on one second I've lost my dream knitting oh no I haven't <laughs> it's right in front of me okay so I saw this um, on Instagram and it's the Noel pullover. Isn't that beautiful? Look at the um, the colour work. It's got little hearts. So pretty. It reminds me of a Norwegian pattern actually or Scandinavian. And this pattern is by Olga Patano. Um, she's the handmade closet. Okay so I've ordered the yarn and this is what I got, which is really pretty, but it's a little bit more brown than I thought it was going to be. It's actually showing up quite pink on the screen, but it is a little bit more brown in real life. And the um, contrast color I got to go with it is this. And I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm loving it, but from my floozy, I have this, I can't remember what it's called, but it's like a natural colour left over. And I'm wondering if that would look better. What do you think? So it's this option. So this would be the contrast and this would be the body. So it's this option or this option. I would really love to know your thoughts because I'm stumped on it. This is definitely going to be the main colour. Or maybe there's a another colour that would look nice with it. Maybe like deep burgundy or something. I don't know. So I'm thinking about that at the moment. So let me show you the design again so you can help me. It's quite delicate, isn't it? Hmm. So advice, please, would be gratefully received but it's a lovely pattern. Okay, I'm only on the first page of my show notes. I need to speed up a bit. So from the postie, I have had other things to be honest, but um, it's been so long, I've put things away. So I'm just gonna show you this. I mean, how gorgeous is this? Absolutely beautiful. It's got neon pink <laughs> and orange, but I love that orange. It's so nice, so beautiful. And this is um, from a lovely, lovely new friend of mine who I literally adore. She's like my new, um, <laughs> I don't know what to call her. I just love her. I just really, really love her. She's so lovely. And that is Jade from Stitch Mischief. 
and um, she has such a nice podcast. It's actually on my list to tell you about her podcast, so I'll tell you now. Her podcast is Stitch Mischief, and her colourways are beautiful. She's so bright and fresh, and she's just a gorgeous person with the loveliest personality, and her little girl is so sweet, and she's on her podcast too, and she's called Skylar. So it's so lovely. And so this is very, very special. I ordered it in the beginning. Let me show you again. I ordered it in the beginning because um, Jade made some socks. Now, what socks were they? They were one of Tracy from the Grocery Girls patterns. Something about coffee. Can't quite remember. but And they look so lovely. And I thought, oh, I just have to have that. And it's called Shine, which is this. So this is this. Look at the pinks in it. Oh, so lovely. And this beautiful little one is Bellini. No, just Bellini. <laughs> Not Bellini anything. But at the same time, I thought, oh, well, I'm ordering. I may as well go for it. They are going to make the most stunning socks. They are much brighter in real life. I can assure you of that. But they're gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. So that's really it from my postie. There has been obviously other things, but that's all I'm gonna show you. Okay, so on to um, giveaway winners. So Amy, little tailorettes, and I hosted a knit along for our Soul Sister sock pattern. It ended quite a while ago, so I'm really sorry if you thought we'd forgotten about you. But um, it was so lovely to see all the Soul Sister socks knit up. And I hope you enjoyed the pattern. I love that pattern. It's so addictive and easy, really easy. And so, yes, we had our um, knit along. Um, so thank you to everybody who entered or who has purchased a pattern. I'm so thrilled and I know Amy is too. So we're really excited about that. Anyway, let me get on to winners. The first winner will receive this gorgeous ball of yarn. It's a gobstopper ball from Scrumptious Pearl. And that will be from Amy. I'm not sure what the colourway is, but I'm just showing you a picture now so you can see. It's so pretty. So the winner for that is... I got a yarn crush on Ravelry. And her name is Rosemary. And it was post number seven. And you live in California, Rosemary, so congratulations. Um, I'm putting your name on the screen so you can make sure it's you. So if you could contact either myself or Amy, whatever's easiest for you, however you like, you can contact us through Instagram, Ravelry, um, our blogs, any whatever's easiest for you, and with your full name and address. And... Um, I'll let Amy know and she'll post that off to you. So we decided to draw a second winner because it's so exciting. And the second winner will win this beautiful pattern from my lovely friend Becky. And it's her snow day cowl and it's so lovely. She gifted this pattern to me as well and I really want to make it soon. I wear cowls a lot and I just find them really practical and cosy. And this is one is so, so pretty. So thank you very much to Becky for donating that. I also have this really cute pin, which I will post to you along with something else. And it says, life is one big whip. Life is one big whip. And that was sweetly donated by my lovely friend, Chrissy, who is Chrissy Crafts. And she sells these in her Etsy shop, actually. Ooh, sorry, my squeaky knee on the cupboard. <laughs> Yeah, she sells them in her Etsy shop, so I think that's so, it just makes me giggle when I read it because it's so true. Also, the lovely Leona of Blue Merlin Makes has donated some of these gorgeous necklaces that she's made. It's crochet and she's fitted it into this lovely um, setting. Isn't that beautiful? And this one is beautiful purple and russet and very autumn -y. And it's on this lovely bronze chain. 
and um, it's a card there. She also sent a few more, so um, there we're going in the prize basket. And this yarn is Malabrigo Archangel, so that's really lovely. And the winner of that lovely collection, so the pattern, pin, and the necklace is Lynn DX, who is Lynn and post number 12 in Berkshire. Is it Berkshire or Berkshire? Berkshire in the UK. Um, sorry to keep looking down, I didn't want to get anything wrong. So, um, yeah, that's it. So, Lynn, if you could contact me again, however you like, and uh, give me your full name and postal address, and I will get that off to you. So, congratulations to both Lynn and Rosemary, and a big thank you to all of you lovely ladies who donated prizes. That's so kind of you. Thank you. Okay. Oh, my goodness. This is a long one, isn't it? What do I have left to talk about? Let me check. Ah, not too bad, actually. Cold tea. Actually, it's quite nice. This is quite nice. We don't like cold coffee, but this tea is quite nice cold. Okay, so on to shop news now. Um, I just want to say thank you so much if you ordered an advent calendar from me. I'm hoping everybody has received them now. They went out a few weeks ago. Um, I'm so excited to see you start opening them. So, oh, it's so exciting for me. I put so much love into those. It's like my highlight of the year. It nearly broke me, I have to say, by the end. But I still loved it. I'm still doing it next year because I love it so much. So um, please, if you post them, please could you use the hashtag um, SSV Advent 2018. I think that's, I think that's hashtag. I'll put it on the screen as well, just to be safe. Okay, so I have some, I have one more update before Christmas. I've decided to have the whole of December and January off, which I'll talk about a little bit in a minute. So um, this is going to be my last update, but I've got some lovely things for you. So first up is a lovely Christmas kit. And this Christmas kit is called They Twinkled and Danced. And it comes with one of my bags. I'm going to stand up and show you this. It'll cut my head off, but I need to show you the bags. <laughs> see, head cut off. So this is the bag. And it's got little, I don't know if you can see the sparkle on the stars. This is the white star. This is the iridescent star, which is a little bit more pinky. And this is the silver star. Which I think is my favourite, actually. So anyway, I'm just going to show you one. The beautiful fabric look, little mice and cats. A little deer, they're all twinkling. Oh, look at all those stars. I love it so much. This fabric is by Amy Cinebaldi, who is, look at me, what a bundle, is um, Nana Company, and she designs the prettiest fabric. I used some of this fabric last year in her white and gold colourway. So gorgeous. Um, these have sparkly linen. You can't see the sparkle, but it's sparkly. Um, drawstring. Inside it has two lovely big pockets which are trimmed. There we go, it's like little, little stars. Has my logo and it has a little tab here and it will have um, a silver, um, what do you call it? Undoable. <laughs> Undoable ring. Well, you know what I mean. You can undo it and you can put scissors and um, stitch markers and progress keepers if they have a big enough kind of hole. So yes, this is the bag, but this is a kit. And it also comes with a sweet little progress keeper, which is an enamel snowflake. I should sit still, there we go. And a tiny little silver star. But not only that, 
it comes with the most gorgeous skein of yarn. Look how pretty that is. And this is called And They Twinkled and Danced. And it's by my very lovely friend Kelly, who is Lay Family Yarns. And look how beautifully it goes. so gorgeous so yes it's very exciting i do have another collaboration with kelly coming next year and that's something completely different for me so i'm excited about that so this will be the kit um my update will be this sunday at 6 p.m uk time whoops um i recommend you um google the time in your um country or I think I use world time buddy I think that's what I use to um, convert time so world time buddy is good so that's the kits and there's um, iridescent there's white and the silver stars a few of each and I wanted to make some needle cozies but I fell I fell I wanted to make some needle cozies but I didn't have enough um, of the fabric left to make one for each of the kits. So I've just made these little ones and there's a few of these. There's not enough for every kit so I'm going to sell them separately. You can see the little stars. These are poppers. It's so cute. And let me show you inside. I've got my logo inside. Yes, yeah, so I've only got I think I've only got five of these so um, they'll be listed at the same time as the kits but separately so hopefully if you would like one of those you manage to get one so there's a few of those there's also a few of these little um, notions pouches I found the linings already cut out and I thought oh gosh I ought to make those so these have got sweet little red glitter hearts on and they're fully lined inside and have the lovely cord um, pull string. So there's a few of those. I think maybe six of these. Um, is that everything? No, that's not everything. Something really special. Um, this is my pin for Christmas 2018. And I love her so much. Isn't she beautiful? She's my festive bird and she's carrying a little sprig of greenery. We can't really see it here but she's got glitter berries on, like pink glitter berries. And I just love the colour of her breast. She's so pretty. So this is my 2018 pin for Christmas. But I have to say, if you purchase one of my advent calendars, you won't want to buy this, okay? I know that gives a secret away, but there is one in your calendar somewhere. So I don't have a huge amount of these left, but if you'd like one, they'll also be in my update. I absolutely love her. She's so pretty. I feel like we should give her a name. What do you think? That petal. We'll have to think. Maybe you can let me know below if you can think of a really cute name for my bird. I feel like she does need one. So yes, that's my new pin, which I love. Absolutely love her. When I ordered my pins, the little birdies, the first batch that arrived to me was not as I'd ordered it. The colours were completely wrong. And so this is the first one that arrived. I mean, she's very beautiful, but you can see the difference in colour, can't you, there? So they very, very kindly made me another batch in the correct colour and they didn't want the original ones back. So I have a lot, well quite a lot, of these birds, which are hugely pretty. Ah, oh, just Marjorie, that's her name. So this is Marjorie. Well, that suits her, doesn't it? Yes. And so I thought what I'd do with the first batch, when the colour wasn't quite right, is to sell them for charity at a really reduced price. So um, normally I charge £8 for my pins, so I'm going to be charging £2.50 for Marjorie, who went a bit wrong. 
and I'm going to give the money um, raised to a homeless charity. Also talking about homeless charities, um, I'm planning with another amazing lady on doing a knit along to raise money for homeless um, people this winter. So keep your eyes peeled for that. But this, all the money raised from Marjorie who went a bit wrong will be donated directly to a homeless charity. I think I've found the charity I want to support but I need to contact them and um, ask them if that's okay. So as if they're going to say no but you know what I mean. So that's my pin. Um, I feel like there's something else. Oh yes there is. And also I have two really really cute sets of stitch markers and progress keepers but I can't show you because I'm waiting for a few findings to come so I can finish them off. Hopefully they'll be in the shop update this Sunday. If not though, the stitch markers will be just a bit delayed. So just to recap, my shop update will be this Sunday, which is, did I write it down? Yeah, the 18th of November at 6 p.m. Yes, <laughs> that's quite correct. Um, yeah, so that's going to be my last update of 2018, which is quite exciting because I have new plans for next year. So I decided to take part in Vlogmas this year. I loved it last year way more than I thought I would. Um, it's really, really exciting and I, I look back on it really fondly and I even watched um, a few of the... Um, episodes from people's vlogmases, vlogmases the other day, it really got me in the mood. So yes, yeah, so I should be doing vlogmas. Um, I'm not going to do it every day, but I think last year I did four videos, so I think I'll do the same again. So combine a few days together, that seemed to work well for me. Okay, so I said I'm taking a couple of months off. What I'm doing in that time is basically decorating my craft room and sorting it out. Um, I'm going to revamp my blog hopefully, um, vlogmas, I'm going to take care of my health and um, also I've decided to write up a lot of my patterns, so that would be my bag patterns, um, hot water bottle cover, cushion covers, things like that. And I'm going to follow in the lovely Jade from Stitch Mischief in her footsteps and say that you can um, use my pattern to make them, make things and sell them if you want to, only on a small scale. Not, I don't want you like manufacturing them in China or anything. But yes, so I thought that would be really nice. And when she said that she was doing that, I thought, gosh, what a lovely giving and kind thing to do. So I'm planning on doing the same. So next year there'll be lots of patterns and hopefully some tutorials on my blog. Um, I just want to mention one more blog that I really love and that is Along Avec Anna and that is obviously Anna and she's French but living in Devon in the UK and I just love her, I love her patterns and her styles so I'll put a link to her blog in my show notes and I think that's just about everything. My camera is flashing at me to say the battery is just about to die so um, I think I'll pop a walk with Mabel at the end of this video. So wishing you lots and lots of love until I see you next. Bye!